What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and then either fix them or build them, depending on how they rank. Now, this week, we are three weeks in to our dive into the cleric class and we reach a very interesting uh, a very interesting subclass called the forge domain cleric so this is if you want to be that dwarven type of of character it doesn't have to be a dwarf but dwarven type of character that worships the god of the forge um, and can make little small objects and do a bunch of stuff with fire and that sort of thing this might just be your ticket so make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as you can see most people who watch this channel are not subscribed so please help us to fix those numbers and you can do that by of course sharing the video with your friends as well and of course clicking the bell so you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded now the forge domain cleric is a very very cool take on the cleric it's very unique uh there's definitely not another domain like it and it's really cool uh it allows you to worship the gods of the forge and you can make little small objects and you deal fire damage and you do all of these really really cool things so is it effective though let's find out so at first level we of course get our expanded spell list like always this is a really good spell list and so we get identify searing smite heat metal magic weapon elemental weapon protection from energy fabricate wall of fire animate objects and creation this is a fantastic spell list um especially things like wall of fire and heat metal um and animate objects all three of those are absolutely amazing spells especially to get as a cleric um and so these are all very versatile, very powerful, very nice spells to get. Um, but also, identify, you get Searing Smite to add just a little bit of extra damage to your to your weapons. You get Magic Weapon and Elemental Weapon. Um, yeah, most of these spells are really, really good. This is a 9 out of 10 spell list. Um, not every spell is amazing, but most of them are really, really good. And so, yeah, we're off to a great start as far as this goes. At level 1, we also get some bonus proficiencies here where we pick up Heavy Armor and we get smith's tools tools are take it or leave it but heavy armor is quite nice now we do not get martial weapons so you will have to go around with simple weapons but honestly i would rather have the armor to be honest with you and so this is really really nice again this is an 8 out of 10 we didn't get both but getting this one is really really good Finally, at level one, we get Blessing of the Forge. And so this allows us to magically imbue either a weapon or armor at the end of a long rest. So as long as we touch one of those items, either a simpler martial weapon or a suit of armor, it becomes a plus one weapon or armor. And this lasts until you finish another long rest and which you could do it again. This is pretty cool. So we're kind of getting into artificer territory here. And so an artificer... Uh, an artificer multi-class is definitely pretty interesting here being able to create things but being able to just have a plus one weapon or plus one armor at level one that's really handy that that's really really nice to have um, and you just do this for free and you don't even have to necessarily use it yourself. Uh, I definitely would use it on myself, but you could give this to somebody else if you wanted your fighter to go ham or you wanted your paladin to have some bonuses, things like that. You could do that. And so that's really, really awesome. So this is honestly a 10 out of 10 feature. Being able to give yourself a free plus one weapon at level one, that's really, really good. At level two, we of course get another channel divinity option called Artisan's Blessing. Now this is basically a more limited version of Performance of Creation from the Creation Bard, but basically what this allows you to do is create a non-magical item. Now there are a lot more limitations on this feature than there are on the, on the Creation Bard, but let's see what we get here. It has to include some metal. Um, it can be a weapon, it can be a suit of armor, it can be ammunition, set of tools, or whatever other, uh, whatever other metal object. The one that I come up with is like a key, so you, you can just make a key to get yourself out of jail. That's pretty neat. Um, 
Now, the thing is, it cannot be more than 100 gold worth, and you have to have the material with you, at least of a value, in order to make the creation. So, that's pretty cool. Now, you don't get the cost back once you've paid for it, um, and, you know, you can just straight up put money in there and, and use that as your... As your um, as your way of, of turning something into this magical item or non-magical item rather but how good is this feature this again just like the creation bard is a creative player's playground this is where all kinds of shenanigans can happen like all the time um, being able to just create something that's really good uh, that's really really nice and your possibilities are kind of endless and this is your channel divinity you can do this once per short rest for now and then more so later but what i like about this though is that this is something that is really useful when you need it but otherwise you can just use your harness divine power um but you know if you need something great you've got this this is basically a free spell essentially um and then if you don't need it you can just get spell slots back which is also good so I think this is really, really nice, honestly, especially for creative players that come up with really interesting solutions to problems. And so I, I've got to give this a 9 out of 10. This is a really good Channel Divinity option, and it just it can allow you to get into and out of a lot of really interesting situations that you may not have been able to otherwise. At sixth level, we get Soul of the Forge, and we get two things. One, we get resistance to fire damage, and two, we now have a plus one to our AC while wearing heavy armor. So this means that if we use our first level feature, Blessing of the Forge, in addition to this, we could have a base 20 AC, not counting a shield or any other magic objects. It's assuming you get, you know, full plate and everything, but you could have just a straight 20 to your AC without any other bonuses. That's really awesome. <laughs> That's really, really awesome. So this is a great feature. Resistance to fire damage is awesome because fire is pretty common. And of course, this could depend on your, your campaign setting, but I mean, you're gonna come up against fire damage. It's just too common to not. So this is really, really nice. This again is gonna be a nine out of 10 feature. Being able to boost your AC is always good and getting resistance to a very common damage type, also really, really nice. At level eight, we of course get our version of Divine Strike, which allows us to do an extra D8 of fire damage when we hit with a weapon. And this goes up to two D8 at level 14. This is great. It's just extra damage added on to added on to our already amazing attacks. And again, this could come be coming from a plus one weapon if that's what you chose to use your blessing of the forge for. And so you're dealing an extra bit of damage. You're dealing extra fire damage, and it's just once per turn. It's not like this is limited to you know wisdom modifier times per day or anything. It's every time you hit with a weapon you can deal this extra damage, which is really, really cool. Now it is fire damage, which of course fits really well with your forge domain, but also there are a lot of things that resist fire. So that is a little bit limiting, unfortunately, but it's still really nice. It's still a really nice feature to have. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10. I would give it higher if fire wasn't so resisted by like a bunch of stuff, but it's still a very good feature. Finally, at level 17, you get Saint of Forge and Fire, and this gives you two more features. Number one, you're now immune to fire damage. So depending on your campaign, if you're fighting like demons and devils and that sort of thing that want to throw a bunch of fire damage at you or ancient red dragons or whatever, you just walk up to them and just go, mm, I don't care. You know, you, you are literally the ancient red dragon slayer at this point because you also, while you're wearing heavy armor, have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical attacks. That's also pretty good. Now, here's the thing. You could have had you could have had the ability to have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing of of magical and non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, slashing by taking one level of barbarian. So that's a little tough, right? Uh, that, that does make it a little bit more difficult to, to choose which one you wanna go with, um, but still having immunity to fire damage is pretty nice. Um, but again, as far as like whether or not you wanna take this, this really depends on your campaign, especially are you going to 17th level? And if so, what are you going to be fighting? Because you may want to pick this up through Rage as a Barbarian or, or something else, um, some other class feature in order, to, uh, in order to fill this gap in. 
overall, this is a really nice feature. Um, I, I don't think it's busted by any means. It's definitely not as good as the ones we've talked about in previous episodes, um, but it's still really nice. Um, I just don't like that it's limited to non-magical attacks. That's that's one thing that kind of bothers me. Um, so this unfortunately is going to be a 7 out of 10. Uh, just that limitation is rough. That limitation just really doesn't help because, I mean, let's be real, you're facing almost exclusively at this point probably things that can deal magical damage i mean it just it is what it is so yeah unfortunately i, I just don't think it's as good as it could be so final thoughts and final ranking this is a really cool subclass uh it's flavorful as all get out um it's really really cool it does have a lot of like dwarven-esque like theming to it but you don't have to be a dwarf in order to do this which is really nice um anytime that you limit a subclass to a specific race that's a bad thing limiting player options is bad i don't like that it's always a bad choice um but that they don't do that here which is really good um you get so many meaningful features here you get your blessing of the forge which is going to help you throughout your entire career because then you know you get a magic item you get a magic weapon say you can just switch your blessing over to your armor or you get magical armor you can switch it over to your weapon or your friend doesn't have a magical weapon or magical armor yet you can give it to them that's really great you can juggle that around every day depending on who necessarily needs it um, your channel divinity can really impact the game you know it doesn't specifically say what it is that you can and can't do because it is so open-ended and when you give people open-ended options like that to be able to just create something, you, you can really get yourself into some crazy stuff or get yourself out of some crazy stuff as well. So really, really awesome. Getting resistance and later immunity to fire damage is really, really cool. Extra damage on your melee attacks. All of this is really nice. Is it the best of the best clerics that there are? No, it's not. But it's real close. This is a 9 out of 10 subclass. It's really, really good. There are better options. But barely. This one's... this. It's like a 9.5. It's like right there. It's trying to be a 10, but it's just... It's not quite there, unfortunately. Um, but we will talk about the 10s later. Um, there, there may or may not be some. But yeah, it, it's a really good subclass. And I think that you will definitely enjoy playing this one. So that is our video on the Forge Domain Cleric. We are of course going to be building one of these later this week. Finally, we get to build one after fixing them for two weeks in a row, but you know, it is what it is. It, it, it happens. So I hope you guys are looking forward to our first Cleric build on the channel. Until then, make sure that you stay safe out there, stay healthy, leave a like on the video, subscribe, all the good things. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.